I have the great honor of, of presenting this award. Sandy Lusk has been a friend for a number of years. I, I think I'll start off with a bio and then I'll go into the stories. Sandy Lusk was born and raised in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Don't hold that against her. She relocated to the Bronx when she married 37 years ago. Her husband Douglas, Doug, as we all know, from Westchester Square. She's been active in the community since 1990, when she founded the Westchester Square as the Riga Improvement Organization, also known as WISO, an, an incorporated nonprofit, all volunteer, grassroots advocacy group that also provides and organizes children's activities, face painting, and parks events. I think they left off library events. In 1995, after taking a leading role in a two and a half year battle to have Westchester Square Community Board move to Community Board 10, which is also the 45th precinct, she was the first resident of the Westchester Square Zurich community to be appointed to Community Board 10, where she was chair of the Community Board's Youth Services Committee from 96 to 98. From 92 to 98, she was a member of the Northeast Bronx Community Coalition and a participant and organizer of three country fairs, as well as two national night out against crime events with Dorothy Kennedy, where she learned event organizing skills that she, with Wizzo partner Woody Brundridge, has used in annual events Wizzo hosts and or participates in throughout the year including the Borough-wide Family Fun Day, the Pearly Gates Playground Summer Mini Camp, and the Library Arts and Crafts programs at the Westchester Square Branch Library. Sandy has been very active in advocacy, co-writing the proposal with BCA and John Benizio of the Association of Merchants and Professionals of Westchester Square, and actively participating in the multi-agency and community committee for the redesign and renovation of the Owen Dolan Plaza, recently completed. She also wrote a mini proposal for the interior of the renovation of the Owen Dolan Rec Center, which is now on the way. She was also very active in promoting the second renovation of Pearly Brook's Playground, which is now a state-of-the-art park. And I want to say in the budget, for those of you in the room who have anybody who can call Probably Great's Playground this year did not approve a Playground Associate. Get on the phone to the elected officials, so that's not acceptable. In addition, as an advocate for public schools, she was instrumental in getting PSMS 194 built in the Zuriga community and sponsored a yearly community service scholarship award to four graduating education funding for the Alliance for Quality Education at Lima High School in June 2003 and has attended numerous hearings at the City Council Board of Elections concerning elected education funding, charter schools, and overcrowding issues. She continues to write about this issue in the Wizzo column in the Brown Times Reporter. Sandy's work with Wizzo has been recognized with several honors and awards, including a certificate of merit granted by Fernando Ferrer, our president, New York Parks Foundation Green Award for service to New York City Parks, Great Spirit Award for Community Service by the Chippewa Democratic Club, recipient of the Trust for Public Land Nursing and Brands, and appointed moderator and presenter at the Trust for Public Land Workshop for, on Community Organizing Public Spaces, presented at NYU, designated friend of New York Public Library, appointed Bronx Advocate for Libraries, guest lecturer at Partnership for Parks Community Organiz Organizing Seminar at NYU, and Partnership for Parks Lecture at a fundraiser on grassroots level, presented at Owen Dolan Rec Center. She also received a Woman Histories Month Recognition Award in 2012 from Owen Dolan Rec Center, and one of the most influential women of the Bronx to be on the Bronx Times Reporter in 2013. Sandy's appeared on New York One, Bronx 12, Eyewitness News, and other network news discussing education and other related issues, and has been profiled in the Bronx Press Review and Newsday, and has been interviewed by the New York Times, Daily News, Bronx Times Reporter, Bronx Beat, and has been a columnist for the Bronx Times Reporter writing on local and citywide education and
and homeless policy since 1990. She has two sons and a daughter-in-law, Ricky, Rodney, Stephanie, and currently works in Manhattan as a principal medical editor for Cortex Complete Medical Park of the Mechanic. It's a beautiful bio, but it doesn't tell the story. Back in 1990, my daughter was four years old. Sandy Lusk was in the Curly Gates playground, cleaning up after the junkies and the bums that were there at night, and making sure it was a safe place for our children to go and play. On her own budget, she ran a summer program in the Curly Gates playground. And that's where I had the pleasure of meeting with Sandy Lusk. She was instrumental to so many of the children. And as the controller said, it was her own children that got her involved. You know, as it is for so many of us. But Sandy Lusk, through her intelligence, her dedication, saw this community in need and said, I'm going to make a change. And she did. She took Pearly Gates away from the junkies. She took it away from the gangs. And she stood in there with her group from Wizzo. And they stood strong. And you know what? The gangs stay away. The drug dealers stayed away because she had activity going on there. That's why we need a playground associated in there every year. Because when there's activity in the park, good things happen. When families come back to the playgrounds, the gangs and the drug dealers stay away. So Sandy made that happen at Pearly Gates. And I was so thrilled that she let me sit on her board for a short time to help her out with that goal. In addition, we needed a new school because every child in our community was bussed out. Nobody had a community school in the entire Zerigo area. And it was a big area. So what happened? Sandy went to then, I guess, Councilman Mike DeMarco and said, you know, we're part of Community Board 9. We really should be part of 10 because Westchester Square had three different community boards, 9, 10, and 11. And anytime you wanted to do anything, you had to go to three boards and it was a little nuts. So Sandy convinced Mike DeMarco and the community boards and everybody involved that Zuriga and Westchester Square needed to be part of Community Board 10 and made it happen. It was a two and a half year battle and it was a battle, let me tell you. People screamed and yelled and got all upset over it, but you know what, it made it happen. And it's been a wonderful experience for the Zuriga community as well as all of Community Board 10 and the 45th person. But that wasn't enough. All these kids were being bussed out. There had not been a new building, a new school building, in over 30 years in the city of New York. Not one new building for the public school. Sandy said, we gotta stop busting these kids out. They go to different schools, they're all over the place. They don't have any community because the kids they go to school with, they don't come home with. You know, everybody's spread out. Well, I want you to know that I have the extreme pleasure every morning of watching kids walk to school to PS MS 194 on Waterbury and Zariga, thanks to Sandy Lusk and all the hard work that she put into it. I mean, talk about a fight. <laughs> to find a location, thanks with Jimmy Vacca's help, with Councilman DeMarco's help, and so many community people that got involved, but Sandy really led the charge and that school was built. We have 1,200 students there, Sandy, is that right? Little more. So we, we now, I get the thrill every morning, I see the kids walking to school in my community. The parents walking with them. They're picking them up in the afternoon, not having to get on a bus, but having a community school again. You know, it's one of the greatest thrills I get. And, and it's one of the, the, the one battle that was probably the most important battle, I think, in all the years of my community service, of Sandy's community service that I've ever seen. It's things like that that bring people so close together. And, and it's for all these reasons, and, and for my daughter, and for my community, and for all the kids that go to that school, and for all the wonderful work that Sandy Lusk has done over the years, I, I want to present this award to Sandy Lusk. So Sandy, come on up. Thank you.
Well, I don't know what else I can add to that. Um, I, you know, I'm a community organizer, and when I see something that needs to be done, and some things in Westchester Square in 1990 really needed to be done, um, I just we just organized and we did it. You know, the school was a 10-year fight. It was a fight. <laughs> the community board boundary switch also was a fight. You know, um, a very public one, but you know. We believed in it, we believed in Community Board 10, we believed in Jimmy Rocka. <laughs> and we knew it would be the best thing for the community, and so relentlessly we forged ahead. If it's one thing anyone who's worked with me knows, I'm relentless when I really believe in something. Crawley Gates, Parks, what is community? What is, what forms a community is what we really had to ask ourselves in Westchester Square in 1990. What are the things that are central to community? A park, safe place for children to play, a community school, a functioning library, which at the time was threatened with closure. We also protested to keep that open and started our programs there. It's, uh, a, a commercial area that people go to, um, a park like Owen Dolan, where people can shop and then sit down and relax and, you know, all of these things, all of these things are central to community. And 20 years ago when we started, we knew these were the things to work on. And our philosophy has always been not to complain so much or dwell on the negative, but focus on the positive, focus on what can be done, shore up what's good, um, minimize the negativity and what's negative, and work to eliminate it. As Bob said, this is, and this is a very true thing, when the positive comes in, the negative retreats. We saw it literally in the playground. We've seen it on Westchester Square, which is undergoing a, a, a revival now with the bid um, under Lisa Soren's direction and you know everybody over there for doing a wonderful job. We needed a town center again. Westchester Square had been Westchester Village. Owen Dolan was the, the town green, the village green, if you will. It was a central place. It's now a central place again in the hundreds of years, I guess. Um, Anyway, I've been fortunate, very fortunate, to be in this community. It's a pleasure working in this community with organizations such as the 45th Precinct Community Council and Community Board 10, and the 45th Precinct, which has always been very, very open and cooperative in working with us, with our elected officials, who are not just elected officials, but people we know personally, people who really do care about the community. This is a wonderful community to work in. It's a strong community. The board is a strong board. Um, you know, it's a group effort, and it's been wonderful, and it's been a wonderful experience. We still continue with all of our children's programs, because that's what we do. If you go on our Facebook page, <laughs> you will see our schedule. We're always in the community every single weekend doing stuff, meeting the children. We love the children. We want to through our arts and crafts programs, encourage the creativity of the children, and as artists ourselves, we do face painting because we are artists, and this is the only way we can express our creativity. <laughs> so anyway, enough, long-winded enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.